Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Today is the first of a series of interviews featuring people whose work, passion, and creativity is a source of inspiration for my own creative endeavors. I can think of no better person to kick off the series with than Graham Haynes. Graham is the man behind the Instagram account A Scene Is Born, and his work revolves around toy photography, paleo art, and a wide-ranging love of the Jurassic Park franchise. I hope you enjoy. So today we are with Graham Haynes, the founder and creator of A Scene Is Born. Graham, thank you so much for being with us. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hey, man. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm so, 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 so grateful and really honored. Um, yeah, such a fan of your work, dude. Um, so, yeah, I'm a South African guy that uh, moved to the States two years ago. I now live in Seattle uh, from Pretoria in South Africa. And, um, yeah, about a year ago, I started a little Instagram page that, um, to, to showcase my toy photography that I just started dabbling in. And that's how a scene is born was created. I have a little bit of a film and uh, TV background, but, uh, when I moved to the States, I had, I, I, I fell out of that and, uh, I, I didn't want to lose, um, lose my momentum and I wanted a bit of a portfolio, I guess. And so... I decided to try out toy photography. I'd uh, I'd seen a video on um, on Tested. Yeah, you know if you know the Tested YouTube channel, mm -hmm. they uh, they looked at a uh, well they did an interview with Sergeant Bananas, and he was um, his setup just looked so uncomplicated, and I was like, come on, I can do this. And so I grabbed um, I grabbed like a flashlight and a and a headlight for, for that I use for cycling, and. I I bought a T Rex uh, that had just been released uh, for the Mattel Jurassic range, and uh, with the Jeep and the, all these things that I could never get in South Africa, and put it together, took a shot, and I was like, yeah, I think I think I need to start an Instagram page, and so yeah, it's a it's a collection of of pictures that look like. Uh, either scenes from Jurassic Park or scenes that could happen in the Jurassic universe, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess sometimes just they've just a, a, a guess at what prehistoric life might have been like. So it's a mixture of like paleo art and, and toy photography and uh, and toy cinematography, I think. What's your background in photography, videography? So I worked in a studio at, uh, at a university, but like you do, and... Um, Gosh, I was, I was thrown into the deep end there and I, I did some camera work, I did some directing, some set building and design and then uh, got to got to play around with lighting there. Um, and then from there I left and very briefly worked on a, not briefly, we did kind of two shows, uh, sorry, two seasons of a prank show for MTV, uh, which I shot, acted in, did some of the costume work, uh, did some of the sound, did, did all the, the camera work when I wasn't on the, uh, in front of the camera. And yeah, um, so, so I've got this kind of very varied, varied uh, background in that, uh, which has fortunately set me up with, uh, with a few tools that I get to use now for, the, for this. What's your current profession? Oh. Are, you, are you a videographer or a photographer now by trade? I wish. I've completely fallen out of the industry here. I work in a, um, in a production facility that makes uh, parts for medical equipment. Okay. Um, yeah. I really miss the creative stuff. It's also it's also why this is uh, something that keeps me keeps me stimulated and happy when uh, when it gets a little bit on the the boring side. A lot of times, I feel like these types of things can be a good creative outlet from whatever our you know day to day nine to five. Yeah, jobs absolutely. Is. So you already mentioned your subject matter: uh, dinosaurs, Jurassic Park, miniature sets. Uh, what's the connection there uh, behind your obvious interest in Jurassic Park or dinosaurs? Uh, so I should rewind a little bit. Um, so my Jurassic Park's always been my favorite movie. Uh, at some points in my life, I feel like I needed to kind of. It, it was a bit of a secret because it's one of those. It's like a. It's it's like a childish fantasy, and people ask you what's your favorite movie. You know, you come up with some really fancy B. Uh, what do you call it? Indie indie film, and I was just always like Jurassic Park. It's just there's just <laughs> something so, so it's just a masterpiece of of like. Of cinema for me. I mean, it's full of mistakes and like the hand grabbing the raptor in the kitchen, yeah, yeah. whatever. But it's, it was just so groundbreaking. It's such a, like in recent times, it's popped up as such a, uh, it's been it, it reinforced how uh, pivotal and important it is as, as cinema history. And 
I just it, it just left so many people looking at the screen thinking what am I looking at like mm -hmm. what is this I just don't mm -hmm. understand how did they do that and I uh, so the first time I saw the trailer for the film I was like six or seven and I think after that we watched like Kindergarten Cop or something and I don't even remember the film because I sat through the entire movie being like what did I just see what was this trailer I just saw um, and yeah so it's it, there's just this this real amazing like passionate thing there that I, I, I like going back to visit and um, and every time every time I, I create a set and I set up the lighting I set up the camera I feel like I'm to a degree, sharing something with the original creators and, and getting to experience some of the challenges they may have experienced, like lighting challenges and reflections. And it's a bunch of things I can explain. And it's, it's also just a lot I can't. It just makes me feel real good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I can relate. I mean, working on Indomation, that was kind of a love letter to... Yeah, my, my passion and desire for Jurassic Park and then and yeah. also Jurassic Park what I'm finding with a lot of different creators uh, while everybody loves that as a movie it's also been something that inspires so many people to get into yeah. filmmaking or some kind of creative art form whether it's photography yeah. video work or animating or whatever it is uh, because it was so groundbreaking at that time uh, yeah. so yeah totally totally relate to that um, you talked about f feeling like you are sharing in the creation in like what it must have felt like for those original filmmakers who made well, Jurassic just, Park. And, just maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just maybe. Well, and I think specifically with with your work, I can totally see that being the case because you know, I look at your work and I would probably I would call it hyper realistic in that when I'm looking at your work, it doesn't seem like I'm looking at another dinosaur toy Instagram that I still love regardless. Thanks, but dude. I, I, it, it, yeah. These things look like real shots from the film or like they're deleted scenes or something. It's wild. And the fact that you're doing them with toys, with miniature sets, all that you've done by hand is phenomenal. So can you tell um, – can you share a little bit about your skills or experience crafting miniature sets and, and dioramas? Is that something that you particularly enjoy? So that's quite a new space for me. I, I grew up with two parents that were very hands-on. They made stuff with their hands. And, uh, so I, I, yeah, I guess it's just a kind of a, a sense of openness and freedom and easy ease of, 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 of creation there that, that I inherited from them. Also got a, got, got a really creative sister and we'd, we'd inspire each other to, to, to make stuff. And, um, I have just recently, um, started playing with that, uh, that in that space of, of just, you know, if you need something, just make it, um, like the, the 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 bunker or the maintenance shed I've got here that I I just I'm gonna flip it around so you can see the back of it. Um, it's just it's just foam uh, that I cut out, put some paint on, and um, yeah, like I, I I like watching these how-to videos like the ones that uh, that Ted Brothers makes and looking at the these little paint techniques and stuff like that so i just i just started trying it and i also got this uh the, the fence from that scene and <laughs> that looks awesome thank you um, did you did you make all the wires of the fence like did you do all that so it is uh it is just a a mesh that i bought but it is okay. yeah the, the the wire itself is just um it's just thick aluminum wire that's been wow. kind of spanned and then spun and or not yeah and then kind of tightened and mounted and then there's a little wow. sign and that's it it's, it's it's pretty simple and that's what's what's so crazy is how easy you can create the illusion of uh of, of something and i just really enjoy creating illusions um uh, and just that suspense suspension of belief um yeah just sorry i don't think i've answered your question at all but yeah, it's just a case of sitting down, looking at the looking at the film, and just copying what you see, and it's um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, like John Hammond himself, creation is an act of sheer will. So, one of my <laughs> one of my favorite lines is that hyper realism that I was talking about earlier. Whenever you look at your photos, the lighting, the uh, the depth, um, how you've staged stuff is. Is that something that you're aiming for? Would you consider that your style? Uh, all three of those, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, 
I feel like there's a lot of a lot of toy photography out there, and it's and I absolutely encourage it. And I would never put anyone down and say, you know, mm-hmm. your work's bad. Don't don't keep going. Uh, but there seems to be a lot of it. And it is hard to separate yourself from 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 the others. Um, but also, I think that was the that's the whole point for me is the is the the cinematic quality of the of the shots. Uh, mm-hmm. That's where the that real you know that feeling in your stomach it comes from when you when you achieve that and you look at it and you think, man, that's cool. That's that's like bridging the gap between just me sitting playing with toys at home and suddenly mm-hmm. creating something. And people go, man, that looks. It just it just takes you somewhere else, and and so that yeah, it is the it is the goal to be honest. Do you prefer trying to repl- replicate a scene like one to one, like matching a scene, like some of your raptor kitchen sh- shoots have done, uh, or do you like making your own world or narrative? Oh, definitely both. Uh, I feel like I have judged myself quite quite harshly because uh, after copying a bunch of shots, you do eventually start feeling like you're um, you're just replicating someone else's work, and it's uh, it's it starts to feel a little bit. Um, well, yeah, just just like you know, copycat stuff, and then w- what I try to do sometimes is just set up a scene that you could imagine happening in that space that was never, like you said, a deleted scene. Uh, so it is, it is a bit of both. Do you have any tips for aspiring photographers? Oh yeah, so, so many. I was gonna say slow your shutter speed down <laughs> for starters. Then you won't get uh, you won't get crazy smoke wisps in your shots. Um, and but but mainly 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 just just try stuff try stuff get the camera low get your perspective from what a person would see in one of these shots because often you see these like aerial shots and it's and it's kind of my complaints about um, the, the Fallen Kingdom films is that often there's a camera shot and you you ask yourself whose whose perspective am I seeing here mm-hmm. um, whereas in the in the first it's again it goes back to the first film being so good. You always, they show you a shot and it's the height of the camera and the perspective they're showing you tells you how to feel in that, in that, in that situation. And yeah, they're just some random angles and you see that in, in toy photography as well, um, that are just high random cool shots and you're like, yeah, it looks cool, but, but who, who, what's the story and whose perspective am I seeing? So get mm-hmm. that camera right down there and try stuff. And don't be scared. I think I think people are often also scared of of people judging them for playing with toys and a camera outside. Mm-hmm. Just do it. I know I, I get very self conscious because I, I I literally had a lady laughing at me on the uh, I did like a sunset shot with two styracosaurs, styracosaurs, um, and the lady came past and she was just standing there laughing laughing at me and. Um, you just got to carry on. I finished the shot, and I think it came out great. So she doesn't know what the end product looks like. So you know, don't that's, don't let uh, right. don't let people hold you back. Whatever it takes to get the shot, that's that's for sure. Yeah. Could you give us a like a little tour of your your room, your setup? Um, <laughs> My tiny little apartment. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so you shoot. Um, so for the viewers, you shoot everything that they see on your Instagram or on your Twitter. Uh, that is all done in this room that we're seeing right now. So I moved here about seven months ago. Before, mm-hmm. so yeah, so about half of um, half of what you see on my Instagram account is shot here. And also, I just want to say because often people go, "Wow, you must have a really great camera to to be mm-hmm. able to to do that." And no, the answer is I have been shooting on a a Reb, uh, like a Canon Rebel T six or seven something like that. It's a, mm-hmm. the the equivalent is the seven hundred D. Not a fancy camera. You can buy them for about three or four hundred dollars. Not a fancy lens. It's literally just the kit lens. So um, it's not so much about the gear. Obviously, it helps. I've encountered that a similar thing as well, and that people you know look at a five D Mark IV and they go, "Man, that, I bet that takes great photos." And it's like, well, you wouldn't say that about looking at somebody's oven and say, "Man, that thing, I bet it t- bakes really well, good cakes oh, or something," you know? So. Uh, it's like it's a tool that'll help you do what you need. But here's the thing: you can have a really nice, expensive oven, but if you don't know how to bake a basic cake, it's yeah. not going to be any better. But at the same time, don't let your gear be the reason that you believe you can't get better. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, just keep trying and keep mm-hmm. keep expanding your your your, your skills. Uh, yeah, challenge yourself. Yeah, so my uh, my trees that, that you see in the shots are just uh, sticks that are, are stuck to a base. Um, and then a, a bunch of kind of 
just uh, plants from Hobby Lobby that are, are just, you know, put into fill, fill the background. And then often what I do do is also put a, uh, I, I put a TV right at the back to, to fill in the gaps between the trees and, and create a real forest, uh, forest look. And then just for lighting, I've got, um, yeah, little loom cubes. Loom cubes are the best. Yeah. I saw them in the, in the tested video and I, for a long time, wanted to get them. And because of these, uh, these barn doors, you can control the lighting so nicely. Yeah. So that's a, that's a piece of the forest setup. It's a little bit smaller now because I've got the rest of the table saved for, um, for the Raptor, the Raptor setup, which I've, uh, I've got, uh, Ian Malcolm in there standing in for, for Tim. Nice. <laughs> I was about to say, that doesn't look like Canon. <laughs> yeah well let's just pretend he was there too um i okay. guess he was in the building but he was just lying somewhere looking really uh <laughs> really sexy um yeah so we need to uh, we need to get mattel to release the uh the tim and lex figures in the amber collection so that we can do these shots correctly obviously i've also i've i've, I've spun this round so it's actually wrong but if, if i put the camera in there you'll see the uh the, the infamous door um yeah, but uh, but also I'd, this isn't the correct full lighting setup because I've only got uh, three loom cubes and the rest of my lights are very random, uh, random little flashlights and stuff. It's not not too fancy. I mean, I'm just looking at the detail. So you you made all these all this by hand again, right? I did. Yeah. Do you like my wow. my, uh, my my cutlery there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, just like with these um, these tables are just. Are just sheets of uh, of soft aluminum or aluminium, as we call this where I come from, like the, the proper way. And yeah, rolled up to make legs, and just the, the corners are just folded over. I don't think it's focusing on the right thing there. There it goes. And that's that's those, and then I made the ones with the solid end piece that uh, I might still do a shot where you know one uh, where the raptor runs into it and dents it. Who knows? We'll see. Of course, right? Um, and then. I mean, this is the, the thing about this is that these are supposed to be parts, but this is literally just a roll of, of something, you know, sheet, sheet aluminum as well. Yeah, and then I've got uh, got my repainted blue wrapped over there. All right. And my super colossal T-Rex and a Mosasaurus mm -hmm. and some backup plants. And, and then over here is my, uh, my collection. Looking at your work, you do a lot of miniature stuff. What are some things that photographers might not think about when trying to replicate other people's work? I think what people overlook sometimes is your your depth of field in the in the shots. Um, when you look at a film, you're never going to see. I mean, unless it's a, a close up on a person's face where the black background is really really blurred, you're never really going to see a situation where just one dinosaur in the front is is really crisp and the, and then falls off very quickly and becomes blurry, because that's uh, what's that that effect's called the tilt shift effect that you can add to bigger shots to make them look miniature, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. when people are shooting toys, they they tend to shoot them really like with really shallow uh, shallow depth of field and or shallow focus. And uh, I feel like if you want to go for the reality look, then you need to just close your shutter down, increase your exposure time, and then your the the background will also be then in focus, and it looks a lot more cinematic like that. Like mm. that. Um, and then just again that perspective, just get down, get down to the, either the dinosaurs' eye height or the people in the situation's eye height. Mm -hmm. um, if you were a uh, I mean, this this setup I've currently got, uh, it, which is quite bizarre. The the angle's actually on the floor, like right on the floor, but it's 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 that you really feel vulnerable, and that's that's such a such an important thing is try get under the uh, under that that kind of eye height of the either the dinosaurs or or person's eye height. One thing that I think I notice about all your every photo that you that you've taken uh, that I'm drawn to is this really dramatic lighting. Um, so fortunately, if you're copying a scene, usually the lighting is uh, the lighting setup is kind of given uh, is done for you, and you just need to copy mm -hmm. it. Um, but it's it's a it's a tricky one because there isn't just a standard recipe of having a 
And I can see by your shot here, you've got quite a standard recipe. There's like a there's like a, a, a key light in the front and maybe a bit of a fill in the back and then there's something to just give you a bit of a rim light and um, it's that definitely helps to understand that kind of stuff, but it's uh, mm -hmm. it it's hard to apply that to a dramatic scene when you've got you know a, a chase through a forest or you've got rain or um, so it is unfortunately a bit of a kind of solve that problem as you go uh, situation and and that's part of the fun for me is 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 looking at it and, and just trying to figure out how would they have done it on the day when they were shooting this and mm -hmm. um, and also how can what what can I add to 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 separate the 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 figure from the background and separate trees and um and and yeah so that's that's also where the where the haze comes in is is haze gives you such a uh a nice feeling of depth by separating the the the, the images in the foreground from from all the objects in the foreground from things further back because the further back you go the more haze you'll see and it's it's something that if you do it well enough you don't notice it um, and, but if you've got too much of it, then it's very obvious and you're like, what is this? So it's a, it's a, there's like a fine line there of just, of getting enough of it in so that it definitely works, but not, not too much. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but it seems like you do everything in camera. Is that correct? I do most of it in camera. I really enjoy, I think my, my, on my Instagram, it says practice, practical effects geek. I really like doing, um, uh, most of what you see in camera on the actual set so uh, i don't add any of the light rays or anything like that post in post i, I literally just import it into to lightroom uh adjust the color a little bit uh some you know the brightness and then what i like doing is taking uh just editing out the joints in the in the figures to make it look just to give you a little bit more time to look at it before you go oh this is a toy you know just to, to to buy some time but other than that i really i like to fill the frame with everything that you see in that frame on the day when i do the shoot um i don't know I, it's it's hard to pin down why but i feel like there's a lot online of um a, a lot of imagery that is computer generated or photoshopped to a, to a crazy extent uh, and it's just it seems to lose something and I think, I think I also just enjoy it because it's also back to why I enjoy Jurassic Park so much is because they did so much practically. They just literally had the animatronic standing there, breathing, you know, spitting, staring down, you know, moving around in the rain. And I just admire that so much. Uh, maybe I'm just, I'm just old school. Tell me, am I old school? Is that what it is? You're old school, but I think, I think there's a desire for that on to a large degree, whether it's with the new, newer Star Wars films or even the yeah. new Jurassic Park films. Like, I think that, I think we are drawn to that and we want that. There's something tangible about having those in-camera practical effects shots that, yeah. I don't, that I don't think can be replicated. So let's let's switch gears a bit. Um, yeah. A scene is born is somewhat of an outlet for you to be creative, you know, because you have your day job that might not be so creative. And I feel like a lot of people are probably in similar situations where, oh, yeah. you know, we, we spend 40 hours a week doing something that we might not be super passionate about, but you find this other creative outlet. So what what is it like on a personal level for you to have your channel uh, and to be engaging with other people that appreciate it? Well, uh, for a start, I'm just, uh, every day I'm amazed at how welcoming and support of the whole community has been to the the toy photography community the jurassic park community uh just the that that whole space has been has been so welcoming so that was a an extra bonus that i didn't expect to be honest um of just meeting new people and have, and, and making friends and connections with people i don't think i would have connected with otherwise ever i couldn't have dreamt of it actually I mean, even this, even just speaking to you right now is, is, is quite surreal. I saw your, I saw Indomation quite a while ago and I just thought, man, this guy is on a complete another level. I, yeah. How do I even speak to this guy ever? And then you, you, you know, you, you reached out to me and I was like, ah. No, that's, that's, I appreciate uh, it for the same way. I mean, it's definitely, it's, it's, it's also something, you know, I try to be a creator more than just a consumer. And a lot of people, you know, get home from work and just turn the TV on and just veg for the rest of, uh, you know, the rest of their day. Um, and I work quite a late shift. I only get home at about midnight. And then, then the real work, well, the real fun starts, should I say. And it is easier to just, just you know, get into bed and just put the TV on. And uh, But it's, it, it's, 
it just feels so good to it's like working out you know working out your brain and and your creativity um rather just use that time and and you know make something and it just feels so it's just such a just such a good feeling and then if it's jurassic park too on top of that mm, <laughs> it just leaves you feeling so good that's um, awesome yeah and I, I mean to be honest I'm, I'm i am hoping that this leads into something more stimulating as a as a job the challenge for many people is how do they make that step from the boring day job that they might not be happy in to making a living from from something creative and uh that's that's my goal too is is just making you know taking that step i really want to get back into the industry that i i i i was really having a great time in and it's i mean and don't get me wrong it's hard work it's way harder than what i'm doing right now but it's so much more fulfilling and i feel like uh until i can do that this is a really really good way of of keeping myself um creatively fit and um and creating something that might reach out for me and make the connections so let's talk about kind of in this in the same vein who inspires you so the first first toy photographer or toy photography work i saw was uh, sergeant bananas and I, i'm gonna exclude you there because i don't feel like yours is straight toy photography yours is amazing stop motion using toy figures well at least innovation is <laughs> This was and all just a big ruse for you to compliment me. That was my goal. I know. I could see. I could see you setting that one up. Uh, <laughs> you're amazing, Mason. You're really incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're literally gosh. blushing. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> I can see it from here. Um, so yeah, he was. He was the first person whose work I looked at, and it was like, wow, this is so slick and so smooth. And then I thought, well, I wonder if anyone's doing like dinosaur stuff, and am I going to be? Am I going to be like laughed out of the room if I if I just start taking dinosaur shots? And then I I searched like a hashtag or two and and pre prehistoric Pat's work popped up. I don't know if you've seen his stuff. Um, it's amazing the quality and just the the believability. He he was the first person that kind of gave me a, a taste of that cinematic hazy depth. <laughs> You'll probably hear a whistle in the background. There's a certain thing that's being celebrated here right now. We won't go into that. Uh, forgive the background noise. Um, yeah, so prehistoric Pat's work was just a real nice segue into into that cinematic, real documentary look. It, 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 his stuff looks like shots or stills from um, Walking with Dinosaurs, that series that the BBC mm -hmm. made uh, all those years ago. And... Yeah, so that I think that was the biggest thing that was like I can I, I can and I want to do this. There's always a really nice story in his his shots and and then I then I googled uh, well not googled then I, I I searched the hashtag for Jurassic Park and boom that whole world opened up to me. Yeah. So and there's just a bunch of people there. I just absolutely should do the same thing. Just just search the Jurassic Park hashtag on Instagram. They're all there. Let's see here. Are there any accounts? That you'd like to, re to recommend whether it's social accounts youtube or anything like that uh for any aspiring photographers to check out or just people that want you know want to be creative i don't know if it's actually shared on tested but adam savage from mythbusters does one day builds oh, where he I love those. Uh, and he's and it just shows you how quickly and easily you can just you can just make stuff by pick it having a bit of a plan having a final image in your head of what you want to achieve mm -hmm. and then jumping in and making it and it's because you think these it. things are going to take weeks of you know fine tuning mm -hmm. and 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 obviously with 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 special effects like you know dinosaurs and animatronics and stuff that takes months of, of building and working but it, when you're mm -hmm. making i mean he makes like like crates and and all kinds of and and just his comic-con costumes they're mm -hmm. obviously they take a while to make as well with a lot of planning but it's achievable and i love how mm -hmm. when you watch it you you see from beginning to end how it's doable and yeah, yeah it's just so that's definitely tested is tested is great for that. Um, mm -hmm. But there, yeah, there, there, there are so many. I, I didn't realize how big the space of just toy photography is. To be honest, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, like Shelley Corbett photography, she does like Lego Lego photos. She's here in Seattle as well, and uh, just all the gosh, there are so many. Uh, I'm trying to think what the other like top toy photos and epic toy art and they're all they're, they all are just loaded with great 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 photographers i feel like i'm only i've been in this a year now and i've spent 
so much of my days on Instagram just looking at um, at, at, at people's stuff and I feel like I've only, I can't even say I've seen the tip of the iceberg, I've just on the tip of the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's amazing, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. What's cool is that it's a very, I feel like accessible community and like there's nobody, yeah. there's, there's not anybody that's hot headed or you know, everybody, you can just reach out to anybody and it's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so please tell everybody watching where they can find you and how to get in contact with you. Okay, so I'm a scene is born on Instagram. So it's a scene is born with underscores under each uh, between each word, and then on Facebook it's also a scene is born. I've got a little fan page going there, and on Twitter it's just scene born because somebody else somehow had taken my handle. <laughs> Um, yeah, and you can reach out to me on any of those or just, yeah, follow me. That'd be awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview. Such it a was pleasure. a blast. Yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a blast. It was, uh, I'm, I'm glad that a lot of people will be able to see, uh, the man behind A Scene Is Born. So, yeah, thanks so much. This is, this is me. <laughs> yeah. It's my first, my first time on camera as the person behind it. So, thank you. Yeah, well, great work and we'll see you around.